Hi all, welcome to the channel, welcome to the workshop. I've got something new for the channel. Um, now, I say for the channel because this is not new. Um, I've got a couple of boxes on here and they're both part works that um, I have had for many years. Um, one is a half built and one is pretty much not even started. So I'm gonna be putting these on the channel. Um, obviously, you can probably just about see that, that this one is an engine. Um, it's the Flying Scotsman. Um, it was done by Hashit Partworks. And in this one, um, it's another Hashit Partworks, and it is the Mallard. Um, both in oak gauge scale. Um, this is basically just a quick update video of where I am with the projects at the moment, and then hopefully I'll be continuing them on the channel. So without further ado, let's get into the boxes and see what we've got. Let's just kick off with the Scotsman. So this is where I am at at the moment. Um, I think let's move that out of the way. Bring this over like this. Now none of this is secured together. So this bit is, and it's a mixture of screw and glue. Um, yes, I know it's a brass kit and there'll be people out there screaming that I should have soldered it. However, um, my soldering skills weren't that brilliant 10 or so years ago when I started this. And because it was never going to be a running model, it was never going to be a static model, um, glue, super glue is the way I've gone with this one and I will continue with that. Um, and after 10 years it's still solid it's still stayed together um so that's all good um but as i say this is the rolling chassis at the moment it's got the uh, front truck on there um the brake line uh, brake gear it's all there um and as you can see the initial starts of the rods um and we've got the little coupling there for the tender. Um, we've got the cab looking just like that. And again, um, the colour I'm not happy about. Um, so this is looking more olive green than apple green at the moment. So I do want to try and find a better colour for that. Um, so I do want to go for the more LNER apple green. Um, just looking at the front of the magazine, um, that might be a bit too bright, but I'm not sure. Um, but that would be sort of somewhere close to where I want to get to. Um, and the printing consistency on these magazines is not brilliant, as you can see. The colour difference between those two is notable. So, trying to find the right apple green for this, um, of what I'm happy with, um, is my new uh, new project, I think. Um, so we've got the boiler. Um, this front part is metal, um, but the rest of the boiler is plastic. Now if I just take that out, you can see that it's just plastic down there. Um, we have got some metal rivets down here. Um, and that was just a bit of metal or brass rod that has been poked through some holes and cut to length. Um, we've got some cast metal details on here as well. And that is uh, a cast metal as well, as you can see. And that just sits in there at the minute. Um, it will be glued, obviously, at some point. Um, we've got the foot plate. Looking just like that. All painted black um, with the green on there as well. Again, in my opinion is that's the wrong green now. Or say it might have been right 10 years ago, but I'm sure the light has faded it or done something to it or reacted to it. Um, it's certainly not looking as sharp as it once was. Um, so that's the engine part. Um, also got the tender looking like this. Um, this is a plastic body part. We've got the metal part there and we've got a metal running chassis there. Um, this is also plastic with some metal detailing on it.
and then we've got the chassis of that as well with the wheels and they're all painted um, there is obviously some more paint to go on here on the brake calipers etc and all the valve all the sorry brake gear needs to be put in place um, I have tried separating these out I think into like engine tender because I think um, that all the issues are like all mixed and matched all over the place um, I think this was the next section I was working on which is the rods and valve gear and that should be pretty much all what these magazines are and as you can see they're not in any particular sequence so we've got 72, 74, 75, 76 um, and I believe there are a few missing issues where you went and done something else um, so th uh, the issue order is a little bit off but as you can see these are what we've got in this one we've got the valve gear piece in this one and then we need to bend bits, glue bits it does suggest gluing these um, it did also say about soldering them I think in the first issue um, and I said I've gone with the option of super gluing them um, and then basically making these parts up and then there was different bits about other locomotives and that sort of thing throughout all the different magazines um, you will notice it's actually part of the uh, partnered up with the National Rail Museum so obviously at the time that this came out um, Flying Scotsman was probably in more pieces than this one um, and to be fair that they've um, they've completed the full-size engine a lot quicker than I've completed this one so what are you gonna do um, I've got some other mini pieces in here um, again these are parts of the valve gear and the running gear um, you can see that they've been sandwiched together all laminated up uh, again that's all been glued and I've got some other tiny tiny bits in there that you can see um, and I'm hoping over the several house moves that this has been through um, none have got lost um, that may be some miracle um, I don't know if that's um, gonna be anything I can replace or change if um, if I've lost any parts um, we also got the little pony truck there as well that will sit underneath the cab um, I've got this little workstation which is where it's been sat for several years we've also got this massive box full to the brim Um, we've got a little toolkit, I think, when we subscribe. Clearly well used. I think I've used to take my pies out of there. Um, as I said, it is a Hashit Partworks. I'm just about to see that the Hashit Partworks logo is just about on there still. Um, I did start keeping myself a little bit of a list of what I've done. Um, so I've got it here started and completed and the various issues and what was actually part of that issue. Um, so it looks like I've started issue 10, so I haven't finished that one. That might be the first one that I do um, for the video. Um, but I need to go through all of this and just remind myself where I am, what I've done. Um, it looks like none of the valve gear has been started um, on that bit. Um, I've done bits of the tender. Um, and again, looks like we've got 125 issues in total. Uh, just put those back in order. Some clamps in there. But again, box full of magazines. Uh, that was obviously when we got the boiler. As I said, this is what we did. Um, a few drops of glue and a brass rod poked through and then cut to length um, I don't know how many there was of those but there was certainly quite a lot and I think there was another way of doing it I think they said you could just put a bit of glue on it uh, alternative epoxy so yeah just put a dab of epoxy along each one so that was another option that we had, but I went for the brass rod option. Um, 
but as you can see, there's plenty of magazines in here. So there might be most, if not all of them. Um, and I think every single one of them has been opened. Um, let's pull those out. Because this is what we're interested in. We have a box of parts. Um, it looks like I've had the forethought to actually label these, which is good. So for each one, I've got the label, so issue 91, so that's obviously part of the tender body. Um, this is obviously the bit that will cover the wheels. Uh, got issue 106 there. That's the suspension parts. Um, I've even kept the old bits of brass. Um, so that might be useful if I'm missing any bits, I might be able to fashion something out of that. Um, again, there's the other half of the tender. Um, oh, we've even got driver and fireman that we need to put some arms on. Um, what else have we got here? Oh, that looks to be part of the cylinder block. So I painted that bit. And that's issue 84, 83 and 81 all, all together. Let's obviously group those together for some reason. Um, and we've got the cab door there. Um, Right. So it looks like I had LNER Doncaster Green, which I'm pretty sure is what they called Apple Green. Um, rail match, apparently. Um, but that still does look a bit olive green to me. But again, that's been sat around for quite some time. It actually separated until I shook it up. It might be that I need a different green. Um, oh, what have I just seen here? We have the nameplates. There we are. So they were painted fully black and then I've sanded the top off to make them shiny on the front there. And then this I think was done with a might have been done with a marker to be fair, but it looks like it could be redone on that one, this looks a bit smudged, not very good. That's the, the name badge, I think. Now I think this is a replacement one. Um, there were various points in this build where they gave us new parts, so that is that. Um, and I think it was down to if you wanted it um, running to change parts out. Um, now I do believe that that wasn't, uh, I can't remember if that was stuck on or not, or whether that was moulded. So whether they'd want us to cut that one out and then put this one in, which looks to be slightly longer. But that's not going to be required because I've got that on there anyway. And as I said, I'm not going to be running this. Um, we've got some coal. That was issue 124. Uh, issue 99. Uh, one of two that's got some brass rod in there and some cable, possibly. Uh, 155, we've got again some more brass rod and some details there. That's obviously all the bits for the side of the engine, all the grab rails, etc. But yeah, I'm sure once I've um, gone through it and sorted this all out and um, maybe fixed some of the parts because, um, yeah, that's a little bit wavy, a little bit bent. Um, then we will crack on and get this one started. Oh, we've got the um, front or the above us there, and the spring mechanism for those. And there's the there's the boiler plate, looking just like that. And again, they were that one as well. Right, so I'm going to put 
pull that lot back. And we'll take a look at Mallard. Right, so Mallard. Um, again, another hatchet part work. Um, I've started separating some of these out. Um, looks like up to issue 10, 11, up to 11. Um, all the magazines on this one, they had, um, they were glued. So you could separate them all out and you could separate them out into the different sections of the magazines. So we've got build the model, Mallard story, Britain's Railways, and classic locomotives, and great railway journeys. So I did start separating those out as, as I said, um, but that's as far as I've got with that one. Um, I will show you a complete magazine when I find one. In fact, actually, I think they're in here, the ones that I've opened. So that was, this is number 12. So they come like this. So as you can see, they are glued down the edge and they can be torn apart and separated out. Um, but this is basically how the magazine went together. So we've got the bit for build your model. And it shows you step by step how to build the model. And again, Britain's Railways. And I think this section changed each time. So although we've got British Railways in this one and classic locomotives, um, in the next one we might have something different. So yeah, so we've got the Mallard story in this one and then classic locomotives. So you basically built up an entire collection or encyclopedia um, as this all went along. So that's the magazines. And as I we'll go through each one of those as, um, as I go through the build. Um, we did get a little toolkit with this one. We've got a square, a pair of pliers, a little clamp, and a couple of pet sets of files. And this is a big box, a yeah, bigger box than the mallet than the Scotsman one. Um, and this is as far as I've got. So this is issue one, and we built up the cab. Um, and this was issue two, and as you can see, it's still in the packaging. Um, let's see if we can just open that one. So, issue two, we got the iconic front nose, we also got the little side skirts. That's obviously sits just there. And issue three, we got this. If I just put that together real quick. Just sort of hold that in place. So by the end of issue three, we basically had that, which is um, pretty good um, considering what we're building. Um, and it should be noted actually, the Scotsman boiler, as I said, was was plastic. This is all metal. Everything you see at the minute is metal. Um, and it weighs quite a bit, just, just that little bit on its own. Um, and as you can see, there's, um, the rivet detail is already moulded in here. So no, um, no brass rods on this one. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the, um, I think I did mention it on the Scotsman one. Um, this is glued. Um, and again, I'm going to continue gluing it. Uh, mainly because I, I'm not running it. Um, and gluing it is just a lot, lot quicker, a lot simpler, certainly for me. Um, yes, I could solder it. Yes, I do have the soldering capability. However, um, for a static model, this will be glued. Um, I have no intention of running it. I have no space for a no gauge layout. I just like the, the model itself. So that's where I am up to. Issue one, as I said. And we'll just put those parts back in there and keep them organized. And again, this is a collection that's been going on 
for years. I don't know if you can even get hold of this anymore. Probably not. Um, oh, this is a little bit about the model. So, all about the model and all the bits how to build it up. So there's ABS parts, um, there's also metal parts. And yeah, these are the different sections as I said, build your model, Mallard story, Britain's railways, classic locomotives and great railway journeys. And I say not all of those feature in every single magazine. So it's, um, you get different snippets for each one. The only thing I think that does feature in every single magazine obviously is build the model. Um, issue 2, only 3 Um I don't know actually how much this was per issue when, I, um, when it was started. Just having a quick look. 7 99 So, that was weekly. Published weekly, 7 99 So, what we're paying now, like 10, 11 pounds per issue for most of our part works now. Guess that's inflation for you. But not too bad considering, say, that was, I'm not sure if there was a copyright declaration on this to say of how old this might be. Just taking a look. Copyright 2014. So we're looking at nine years. Um, this has been sat in a box. Well, I suppose less than that because it would have taken about a year or a couple of years for it to build up. So you could say even like seven, seven to nine years that there's been sat around. So hopefully um, we'll get this all done. Um, let's have a quick look through what we've got in the box here. So we've got the tender there. Um, Oh, I did write on there. So we've got that one at issue 88. And seriously, everything is in here. Um, that was the motor um, that you could get, 25% off. Um, various leaflets and things. Um, and as you can see, most of these magazines are still sealed. Never been opened. Um, I do need to push and double check through that I've got every single one of them. Um, but obviously all the parts in that are still with the magazines um, the ones that aren't coming open anyway um, the ones I have opened as you can see I've got all the bits in the bottom here so 59 I can see there um, so looks like I've opened up about 50 issues at least um, we got the wheels that was issue 37 got one wheel got another wheel at issue 41, I think that was. Got the funnel. And got the boiler. Right. So, that's where I am. That's what we got. And um, it should be a fairly good build. That was the point where we were almost at the end of the build and saying about the motor. So, won't be doing that one. So, look out for that coming on the channel soon. Thank you very much for watching. Um, hopefully that's piqued your interest um, with those two upcoming models. Um, I will probably start with the Mallard first because that is pretty much ready to go. Uh, as you saw, I've only done the very first issue on that one. So I'll do uh, a new video for an intro showing where you are, where I am with issue one and then doing issue two at the same time. Uh, the Mallard, uh, sorry, the Scotsman uh, will need a little bit of work for me to get hold of it and get it to a point where I know what I'm doing again. Um, as you saw, yeah, it's half built, part built all over the place. Um, I haven't gone through each individual magazine in order. Um, I do need to do that and basically see where I am up to that point. Um, obviously, it does need repainting. Uh, if you know 
the best paint for an apple green LNER color? Um, please do leave it in the comments below. I'd be very grateful. Um, I thought I had the right color um, and it might have been okay 10 years ago, but it certainly faded and not looks so good now. Obviously, this didn't even have a clear coat on it, so that might be part of the problem. Um, but yeah, I'm certainly after that nice, vibrant LNER apple green. Um, rather than at the minute, it's looking a bit more olive green, so not very good. Um, so yeah, if there's picture interest, please remember to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and then you'll see these on the channel in the next coming weeks, hopefully. Um, if it's not, please do give me another comment saying, where are the engines? Um, because I would have probably put them back under there and forgotten about them again. So please, 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 if you don't see these on the channel soon, just leave a comment saying, where are the engines? Until the next time, hopefully I'll see you around. Cheers.